Ladies and gentlemen, as courtesy to those around you, we'd like to request that you please refrain from the use of flash photography and video camera lighting. The now Walt Disney World proudly presents the Hall of Presidents.
the warmest friends this Constitution has do not contend that it is free from imperfections. But there is a constitutional door open for change. I think the people can decide on the alterations and amendments which time may prove necessary. General Washington, sir. Mr. Franklin. Fellow delegates, I cannot help expressing a wish that every member of this convention who may still have objections to it would, with me, doubt a little of his own infallibility and put his name to this instrument. And so it was that we, the people, in an age ruled by monarchs and tyrants, established a government bound by the wishes and desires of the governed. That first generation of citizens soon chose George Washington as America's first president. We were going to be a land of opportunity in which the spirit of freedom would grow and expand with the American frontier. Yet planted in our path, every step of the way, were the seeds of unresolved conflict. summoning leaders equal to the deadliest crisis. And one of them was President Andrew Jackson. Brilliant, rough you, courageous. There's nothing that I shudder at more than the idea of separation of this union. I tell you, if a single drop of blood be shed in defiance of the laws of the United States, I will hang the first man I can get my hands on to the first tree I can find. In the end, the conflict would not be averted by words, by threats, by compromise, or by laws. Though many good men and women struggled to settle it in those ways. One of them was a humble, plain-spoken citizen a self-taught lawyer named Abraham Lincoln. I tell you that this doctrine of Lincoln's declaring that all men are made equal by the Declaration of Independence and by divine providence is a monstrous heresy. He's a know-nothing. You tell him. My fellow citizens, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. A house divided against itself cannot stand. <laughs> That's what you think, young drink of water? Yes, my friend. That's what I think. If you have listened to suggestions to believe that all men are not created equal, let me entreat you to come back. If the Declaration of Independence is not the truth, let us get the statute book in which we find it and tear it out. Who is so bold to do it? No one. I won't. Not I. If it is not true, let us tear it out. Let us stick to it then. Let us stand firmly by it. Abraham Lincoln lost that election in 1858, but in losing, he won. For the people did not forget this impassioned man from the prairie who could not bring himself to violate the essential justice of the American dream. Two years later, they sent him to the White House. By then, the time for reasonable words had passed. 
I know there is a God, and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming. I know his hand is in it. We Americans had given Lincoln the hardest task any American president would ever face. When our nation was formed, we had slaves among us. Yet that does not destroy the principle that is the charter of our liberties. Now is the time for decision, for firm, persistent, resolute action. I shall act as I deem best calculated to make America a union of hearts and hands as well as states. I wish to do justice to all. Woodrow Wilson, 
Warren G. Hardy, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, and the current President of the United States, George W. Bush. My fellow Americans, when we look back on the history of this country, we see a record of almost unbelievable energy, sacrifice, hard work, of impossible dreams that our ancestors dreamed and made real. We see injustice, too, that weighs on our hearts even today. But for every injustice, there has always been a voice crying out to right it, and America has always listened to those voices. We are listening today. And perhaps it falls to us, to this first generation of the 21st century Americans, to say once and for all that no child, no race, no creed, no ethnic community will ever again be left out of the American dream. Through education, through the opportunity to work, and to enjoy the fruits of that work, we can open every closed door, expand the horizons of all Americans. Again and again, we return to the same simple principles freedom, equality, the freedom to create, to prosper, to dream, equality before the law, in the workplace, in the chance for a better life. And each time, in the process, America grows stronger. The beacon of democracy grows brighter. The world looks in new astonishment at what free people can do. We the people are just getting started. If the experience of these extraordinary men adds up to any one thing, it is this. To be true to the American dream, one must have the wisdom to remember and the courage to change. In honoring these men, protectors of our heritage, servants of our dream, guides to the future we face together, we honor the enduring meaning of America. We, we the people, hear in their voices the voice of our own hearts. President Abraham Lincoln. My fellow countrymen, I have often inquired of myself what great principle or idea it was that kept this confederacy so long together. It was that all should have an equal chance, that all are created equal. This is the sentiment embodied in the Declaration of Independence. Most governments have been based on the denial of rights, Ours began by affirming our rights. Let us turn this government into the channel in which the framers of the Constitution originally placed it. If we cannot give freedom to every creature, let us do nothing that will impose upon another creature. True democracy makes no inquiry about the color of the skin or place of birth or any other circumstance or condition. We propose to give all a chance. We expect the weak to grow stronger, the ignorant wiser, and all better and happier together. Let it be as nearly reached as we can, for the struggle of today is not altogether for today. It is for the vast future also. So may our children 
and our children's children for a thousand generations rejoice under those glorious institutions bequeathed us by Washington and continue to enjoy the benefits conferred upon us by a united country. Thank you. We have had a wonderful evening in the Magic Kingdom.